All right, in this next video in our Tinkercad Circuits Lab series, we will be working with diodes. In case you are just joining us, this is a companion series to my Introduction to Circuits playlist, which you can find linked in the description, where we go through the circuit diagrams and equations for many common circuits and components that you would find in an introductory physics or electrical engineering course. And in this companion lab series, we will be using Tinkercad Circuits, a free circuit simulator that runs in a web browser and allows you to build things in this breadboard view, just like you would in a physical lab, as opposed to only working in schematic view like you have with many other circuit simulator programs. So one of the first things I have students do when working with diodes is construct their own IV diagram or a graph of current versus voltage because the behavior for a diode is nonlinear. So when you're coming from Ohm's law and resistors where the behavior is linear, it's kind of new if you're working with a nonlinear component. And again, you can go find the right video about diodes in the intro circuit theory playlist if you kind of want to see the intro theory, here we're going to do the experiment. So I find that for this activity, it is useful to use LEDs, which stands for light emitting diode, because they light up. So it just kind of gives you some easy visual feedback when you are building a circuit. So Tinkercad does have both regular diodes and LEDs. You'll see if you mouse over them, which is one of the nice things about using Tinkercad, it labels the anode or positive side and the cathode or a negative side. So for an LED, a physical LED on a breadboard, the anode is going to be slightly longer than the cathode. Usually in Tinkercad, it kind of shows the anode as this bent leg there, which is a little longer. So again, you could do what I'm about to show you with the regular diode, but we are going to do it with an LED instead. So go ahead and put that LED in the breadboard. I kind of cover using a breadboard in earlier videos in this series. One of the nice things about Tinkercad is that when you mouse over the holes, it highlights in green which other holes are connected to that one. But I'm kind of assuming by this point that you know how to use a breadboard, so we're not going to go over that in too much detail. So our goal is to connect two multimeters to measure both the current through this LED and the voltage drop across the LED. And measuring those simultaneously will allow me to construct that IV or current versus voltage curve for the LED, and that's one of the nice things about doing this in Tinkercad. You have as many multimeters as you want available, whereas when you're working in a physical lab, you're usually only gonna have one multimeter per student or one multimeter per lab bench. So it's nice that we can just easily grab two multimeters here in Tinkercad. So I'm going to connect one of them in parallel to the LED, and I'm going to use this one to measure the voltage drop across it. There we go, that's in parallel. And then I am going to connect the next one in series to the LED to measure the current through it. And I have some other videos on my channel about properly connecting series and parallel circuits. So again, if you're not sure about using the breadboard and using the multimeter and the difference between series and parallel, you're probably gonna wanna go check out those other videos first because we are assuming you understand that at this point. I am going to connect a power source if you're doing this in a lab, maybe a benchtop power supply in Tinkercad, I'm just gonna grab the nine volt battery here, the exact voltage of the source doesn't really matter. And if you are doing this or reproducing this in a physical lab, it is very important to include a current limiting resistor with your LED. And again, you can find some more videos on my channel about the math behind that. Here, we're just kind of worried about the physical breadboard setup. So since this is just a simulation, it doesn't really matter if I blow up or damage my LED, but you'll see what happens if I just go ahead and connect my LED directly to power. So you can see I have positive side of the battery going through the series multimeter to the anode of the LED, and then the cathode of the LED is going directly to ground. If I hit start simulation and set this multimeter to measure current so it acts as a short circuit, Tinkercad does actually simulate blowing up the LED. So there's way too much current through the LED above its max rating. And if you did this in real life, you would smoke your LED. So that is why you need a current limiting resistor in series with your LED to limit the current through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just put that current limiting resistor right here. And then if I hit start simulation again, 
we see that I am getting both the current through and the voltage drop over the LED. And the nice thing about Tinkercad is that if I was doing this on a physical breadboard, I would have to swap out this resistor, but in Tinkercad, I can just click on the resistor and change the value. So for example, I can increase that to two kilo ohms, and we see that the current went down a little bit and the voltage changed as well. So again, if you were a student doing this for assignment, you would probably be writing these values down in a table or typing them in a spreadsheet or something. I'm not gonna do that here. I'll kind of leave that as an exercise for the viewer, but you can try both larger and smaller resistances. Again, where if you were doing this on a physical breadboard and I put a 10 ohm resistor in there or something, that's gonna be far too small and it's gonna blow the LED up, but in Tinkercad, you can try whatever you want and get these different values. Another way to do this without swapping in different physical resistors or changing the numbers on this resistor in Tinkercad is to put a multimeter, sorry, not a multimeter, a potentiometer in series with a fixed resistor. So I can say, if you're doing this on a physical, whoops, physical breadboard again, you will want some minimum value to make sure you're not gonna burn out your LED, say 100 ohms. I'll just test this experimentally here in Tinkercad and see. So here, Tinkercad's giving me a little warning icon saying that the current is actually too high and I am not sure, why is it reading zero amps there? Current through the LED is 65 milliamps. I don't know why the multimeter has decided to suddenly read zero for me. So let's see if that's a glitch in Tinkercad. So not a glitch, when I move the multimeter up here, it snapped the two probes into those breadboard holes and it is shorting the multimeter probe. So it is allowing current to flow through these wires, but then just through this hole and shorting the multimeter out. So carefully moving that back over there, hit start again. Okay, now I am back to getting a current reading through the multimeter. So going back to what I was trying to do there, again, look out for that something that is easy to do accidentally in Tinkercad, but not in real life, You're not somehow accidentally going to stick both of your multimeter probes into a breadboard hole. I'm going to include some minimum series resistance with my LED, and then I can add a potentiometer in series with the LED, where for a three terminal potentiometer, I'm just gonna connect the resistor to the wiper and then the outer terminal to power, leave the other outer terminal of the potentiometer unconnected and say Tinkercad gives it this pretty large default value of 250 kilo ohms. I'm gonna drop that down to 10 kilo ohms and maybe set this to 100 ohms. So we see now when I start the simulation, again, it is giving me a warning, but it's not blowing up the LED with a physical LED, 64, 65 milliamps would probably burn it out. But then as I click and drag my tip potentiometer to change that resistance, I can see both the current and voltage drop over the LED changing. So again, if you're doing this with a physical setup, doing the potentiometer is probably going to be easier than swapping out lots of discrete resistor values, especially because for a typical resistor kit, you're only gonna have certain values and you have to combine them in series or parallel to get finer values if you're trying to construct that IV curve. So that's it for just understanding the basic nonlinear behavior of a diode and constructing this current versus voltage graph yourself. Well, again, the nice thing is you can kind of see the LED lighting up and get that visual feedback in addition to just the current reading through the multimeter as you're doing that. Now, in terms of actually building a useful circuit with a diode, there are far more that I can just cover in this video, but I'm going to pick something like a rectifier, which is kind of a common example application that you'll learn about when first learning about diodes. So we're gonna go ahead and delete a whole bunch of this stuff, pretty much clear the breadboard out. And if you haven't learned about rectification yet, again, you can go, I have a video on that somewhere in this playlist, but the goal is going to be to convert alternating current to direct current. Here we go, I do have a video about that down here, number 48, all the way towards the end of that playlist. So we are going to get out our function generator in Tinkercad, and we are going to use this function generator to generate a sine wave that is centered about zero, so it goes positive and negative, and we would like to convert that to a positive only signal. So I'm gonna go ahead and send in the signal from my function generator to some row in the breadboard. I'm going to attach ground from the function generator to the ground bus and I am going to grab an oscilloscope in Tinkercad, which as we've covered in some previous videos, 
is not great. It's not one of the best features in Tinkercad. It kind of doesn't have multiple channels or really individual knobs you can adjust. You just kind of connect it and have to rely on the auto scaling. But I am going to, first things, just acquire my input signal before I build anything in the circuit. So I'm going to connect the positive over here to the positive from my function generator. Just going to start the simulation and say I'm going to have the only thing I'm going to change from the default settings here in the function generator is I don't want a DC offset. So I'm going to drop that to zero and maybe change this to a sine wave. Give the oscilloscope a minute. So I'm going to the default values on the oscilloscope don't match the default values on the function generator very well. I'm going to drop that down to say one millisecond per division and give it a minute to update. And there we go. Now I have my nice acquired sine wave. Okay, if we now connect a load resistor, so we are driving a signal across, across this resistor, say I'm gonna make that 10 kilo ohms, connect the other end of the resistor to ground, and if we start the simulation, we should see that this does not really change anything. I still have my maybe slightly attenuated due to the resistance of the resistor pulling down the voltage of the function generator, but otherwise unchanged sine wave. So to rectify this signal or get rid of the negative part, we are going to add a single diode like this. I'm going to move my resistor down. And again, if you want to see the kind of circuit diagram or explanation of this, you can go watch the corresponding video in the circuit theory playlist. And I'm going to connect a diode with the anode to the positive supply from the function generator and the cathode to the resistor and I'm going to move the output signal measurement to the oscilloscope down here to the junction between the diode and the resistor. So now this diode is only going to let current flow one way. When the signal from the function generator is positive, current is going to flow through the diode, but when the signal from the function generator is negative relative to ground, current cannot flow backwards. And if we start the simulation, Actually, I lied, not going to start the simulation yet because you may have noticed that I did not connect the other end of my resistor to ground. Now, if I start the simulation, we will see that I have built a half wave rectifier. So I have gotten rid of the negative part of the signal and kept the positive part. So again, this is called half wave rectification as opposed to full wave rectification, which is what we're going to do next, where we will actually convert the negative part of the signal to positive. So to do that, we are going to need to rearrange things a bit and add three more diodes to have four total. So I'm going to delete this wire. I am going to connect the negative probe from my oscilloscope to just measure the voltage directly across the resistor. So no longer relative to the ground bus. And I am going to add some more diodes. So I'm going to have another one going from the other end of the resistor to the negative terminal of my function generator. Another one is going to go from the negative terminal of my function generator up to the positive end of my resistor. So this is gonna get a little messy on the breadboard. Let's see how I'm gonna do this here. I think I will use a jumper wire there and then a jumper wire here. So maybe make that one red. And again, that's going from the negative terminal of the jumper wire up to the positive terminal of the resistor. And then I need one more going from the negative terminal of the resistor up to the positive input from the function generator. So again, let's see where I can cram one of those in here. I'm gonna use a jumper wire to go from there to there. So negative terminal of the resistor to the anode of that diode, and then from the cathode of this diode up to the positive input from the function generator. So again, I did a kind of terrible job laying that out there. You could probably make that neater on the physical breadboard or plan this out differently. But if I go ahead and hit start simulation, and if I did all of that right, if you are an astute viewer, you may have caught if I did something wrong because I did not practice this in advance. I am just doing it real time. I should hit start simulation and we should see a fully rectified wave. And there we go. You can see that this wave is now entirely positive and compared to what we saw earlier where we were only getting the positive half waves and then it was clipped at zero, we now have a fully rectified wave 
that is completely positive for each half period. And I had done such a terrible job planning out how I was gonna lay out that circuit that I had to redo it here because I think it is a lot easier to kind of visualize when the resistor is horizontal like this. I usually make it a point when talking about this that it's important not to get the physical layout of the parts in the schematic mixed up with the electrical connections. So this diagram is usually drawn with the diodes kind of at 45 degree angles like this. That does not mean you have to build it on breadboard with the diodes physically at 45 degree angles, but I do think it sort of helps intuitively to sort of see a similar layout for the circuit here. So again, even though the diodes are vertical and not at 45 degree angles here with the resistor horizontal, it's maybe a little easier to see how everything is connected. But again, if you wanna see an explanation of how current is flowing through these diodes and which way voltage drops are, over the resistor for the different positive and negative half periods of the input signal. Go watch this video, I go through all of it there. I'm not gonna go through it again in this one. Here we're just talking about how you build this as one of the many useful example circuits for what you can do with a diode. Now, clearly we have not fully converted this to a DC signal yet. It is still going up and down quite a lot and for a DC signal, we want it to be completely flat so there is another stage here where you feed this effectively into a low pass filter with a capacitor that kind of keeps you charged up and then you have the discharge curve, but it takes long enough to discharge that by the time you hit the next peak, it bumps back up again. Not gonna cover that in this video, have another video about low pass filters and you can go kind of look up the additional capacitor stage of this, but this isn't really a full blown power electronics course starting to get a little deeper there than you usually would typically in an intro physics course. So again, not gonna go there, just wanted to cover diodes in this video. And again, you wouldn't even have to do this rectifier part if you just wanna do that initial part about constructing the IV curve and explaining the physics. There's lots of other things you can do with diodes like a voltage clipper and tons and tons of other circuits. Again, not gonna cover them all in this video, but we will be moving on to transistors next in this series. So be sure to subscribe so you get the notification for the next video, or depending on how far in the future you're watching this, I may have already made the next video. So go ahead and check out the link in the description for the playlist. Thank you.